that um, everything that, that Trump is saying, politicians don't talk like he talks. They don't say these things, these very strong, um, to the point, factual issues that have happened that a current sitting president did. And, and uh, saying it with a lot of confidence that... That it's just you can't it, disprove it. It's good to know that when he says something that is true, that isn't going to appeal to one hundred percent of people, that he says it with strength, conviction, and and uh, confidence. Right. That as long as I'm on the side of righteousness, that everything will work out. Because the if you if you say something that's righteous, anybody that criticizes that. It's going to be the bad guy. Yeah, if you sat there and try to criticize Trump right now, which F. Chuck did not do, he can't. He'll be the bad to, guy. To criticize Trump in saying that we we are actually Iran's best ally, and the reason why is because what I just told you seconds ago is why we're Iran's best ally. And if we weren't their best ally, then I guess what? Obama did this because he was hoping to get them to be our best ally? Right. No, I don't know. I mean, I, why right, else would he? Right. <laughs> well, when I told you, we talked about this last show, it seems like Obama, when he told uh, uh, Putin's assistant or whatever on a hot mic, hey, tell, tell Vladimir, tell Vlad. Tell him so, I yeah. thought he was with that Vlad at that point. I did too. I thought they were going to... Uh, okay, so during the Cold War, one of the big things that Russia wanted to do, or USSR, Soviet Union, is to start taking over countries to become a communist country. They wouldn't necessarily... Stal Stalin wouldn't become the leader of the country. Right. He would. It would become a satellite nation who was under the larger umbrella of the Kremlin, right. which is communism. And he just wanted to keep on getting more and more. You can keep your name in your own country. Right. They're not going to change the name. Gonna, right. Just, just all the policies and all the rules and regulations that we'll put into play. And so he wanted – his dream would have been able to get every single country in the entire world under the communist umbrella, which would be um, centrally uh, dictated to from Moscow. Right. Of course, that would also include the United States. Right. So when the whole thing with, when we know, oh, by the way, we know that Obama's a communist. Correct. He was raised by, he's what, what is called a, a red diaper, diaper baby. baby. Yeah, red diaper <laughs> his baby. His grandfather, who was uh, his mother's dad, yep. his mother's father, um, they were full-blown communists. He was a card-carrying member of the Communist USA Party. And sent his so was his mo uh, mother, which right. would be the daughter of the grandpa. And they were at, and as the story goes, according to uh, uh, historians, the father was at a uh, uh, an event and was asking um, some other communist, "Hey, um, you know, my daughter's going to this public school, and um, I just want something that's more along our lines." And they said, "Oh, you want." The Little Red School on the Hill. Oh, my goodness. And that's what they called wow. it. That was the name they had for it. Oh, so he went to a communist education camp. Oh, 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 his, We're talking his, about your president his mother of the United did, States. His mother went to that Little Red School on the Hill. His okay. mother went there. All right. And then his mother was able to teach him. Oh, she went right. to the Little Red School. Right, right. right. Oh. And the grandfather, right. the grandmother, and the mom, the single mom, because obviously... Obama's dad rolled out on him, which we're not really a hundred percent sure who his dad really was. Right. Either way, it ain't good. <laughs> if there's two options of who his father is, but either way, it ain't good. Yeah, because one of them was a Muslim deadbeat dad, right? Who disappeared. And we he, don't even know why he was in the picture in the first place. Right. And if he ran out, the grandparents still raised Obama with Mama and the communist manifesto right the other one which was frank marshall davis who actually I, i'm just going by pure resemblance if you look at obama's face he actually his face mostly re resembles his maternal grandfather the oh, communist right because he has that long face his the shape of his head and face are so like he looks so much like his grandfather with that shape that longer shape face right. the bigger head and all that but then if you but if you put Obama's face right between 
who his alleged real father is on one side and Frank Marshall Davis on the other. There's so many more features that resemble Frank Marshall Davis. Now, if you took Frank Marshall Davis out and put the other guy in, there is no way on God's... I've no, seen I'm saying all three of them. Put all three of them. Put, put Obama in the middle. Right. Put the alleged real dad, which okay. would be uh, Obama, uh, 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 Barack Hussein Obama the first. First. Because Obama's the second. And then Frank Marshall Davis on the other side of him. So you can see all three of them. It's pretty blatantly. I mean, it, <sighs> and Marshall Davis is yeah, it's blatant. Yeah, because, he does not look a thing right like okay, so, Obama. So won. in general, white people tend to have thinner lips right. than in, than your average black person, right. but not all of them. Turns out, Barack Obama Senior had he, he's an African, very thin lips. Correct. It just so happens. Right. Just so happens he he happened to have kind of thin lips. Frank Marshall Davis has a lot more of the thicker lips. Real full. You look at Barack Obama, he doesn't have his grandfather's lips or his mother's lips. He has Frank Marshall Davis's lips. Right. But that's not it. It's also the nose, too. Um, Barack Obama's uh, alleged father had a thinner nose, kind of pointy, and very dark skin. But that doesn't mean anything because Barack Obama's half white. Right. So the skin. Whoa. Kind of, Are you allowed to say that? Well, um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually immune from liberal PC. <laughs> So, so no, I mean, it, it's just very interesting um, that he, he looks a lot okay. more like Frank Marshall Davis. So getting back, we're talking he's a about communist. He's a communist. Full-blown communist. That being said, now that we know that he's completely communist, which he's also wrote in his books about how communist he is, you know, he sympathizes with them and believes in it and all that kind of stuff. When he was talking to Putin and, and Putin, it was Putin's um, and this underling. Back in the day. It was Putin's underling. Oh, oh, right. That he right, was right, on the right. stage with. Right. right. So he's talking to Russian officials. And this was back when Putin was the bad guy because Putin was ex KGB. And it was kind of like, what is this going to mean? What, where's he going to go with this? Right. Tw yeah. 2011. Yeah. Back before the, the election. Back in the day. Uh, right before, like, the, the second election. And that's when he told Putin that he'll. He said, he said tell Putin. Tell Putin. I'll get. I have I got a, this election thing to take care of, and after that, I'll, I'll have more power, my wiggle room. room. I'll yeah, have more room, right. more leeway. So of course that was uh, the source of endless speculation. However, looking back, Obama really is that uncool dork in the room with a bunch of cool guys trying to be. A, hey, hey, I finally made it to the big stage with Rich Y'all. I'm cool too. Uh, uh, no, dog. No, we, we, we were raised up in this. Dog, we own this. We don't know what you owe. We, we what, what? Do you know that what the what you just <laughs> described there is completely flipped during World War II when Stalin, Churchill, and FDR would always get together to do photo ops. They always uh, treated Stalin and talked behind his back like, oh, gosh, here comes this. So here he comes again. This guy is not in the same class we are. Oh, so maybe card-carrying communists really are that insecure, don't deserve it, just take it. Well, if you take power and control from other people, that doesn't make you a leader. Right. It just doesn't. I've seen it a because million times where you tell somebody, uh, like on a, a sports team, okay, uh, Johnny, you're captain. And all of a sudden he thinks he has power. Oh. But the label means very little. Well, look at it at your, at your job and your workplaces, folks. Somebody got a raise their now management that you clearly know. Yeah. That they don't deserve it. <laughs> they they, and I they mean, don't have the power they think they do. Right. Because They're, you still have to convince people to do what you say. They said for the first two years, and it may have even gone on longer, when Obama was first elected president in 08, he yeah. would constantly walk around the White House saying, yep, yep, this, I own this, this is me. It's what I meant to do. Ugh. Yep, yep. I, I can tell you what to do right now. Yes. And you got to do it. Yes. <laughs> yes. I like telling that Marine to hold that umbrella so I don't get wet. Oh, he should have told him to hold his latte while he saluted him. <laughs> you remember the latte? He should salute? have. He should that have. That was so bad. You know, my brother-in-law was 
done with him over that salute. Because you, my brother-in-law is a military brat. Yeah, and he knew. He grew up his he whole knew life on bases. Right. His whole life. And he was so... he, Which is weird because I was in the military. You were in the military. I laughed at it. I said, what a maroon. You know, I, I, I look at it as this is how dumb he is. Right. But somebody like my brother-in-law or, or probably any other military brat who wasn't necessarily in the military but was around it their whole life, they were so insulted by that, completely angry. Yeah, my brother-in-law, he yeah, I, said, I'm done with him now. I, am de I said, uh, wait a minute, he's destroyed the country and you're just now done with him because of a latte salute? You should have been done with him when he destroyed the country with the Obamacare right. and all that other stuff. But right. anyway... No, I, I digress. <laughs> so, so now that we clearly see that the communists have infiltrated fully into America, the reason why we do this Smith Radio Show is so that maybe one day when we're exiled on an island... Wait, wait. Is this a SmithRadio.com? I thought this was the Communist News Network. No, oh, I'm sorry, the Cold, the Cold, the Cold News, Cold War News Network. Oh, I thought you said Colon News Network. <laughs> well, well, Colin Powell. Let's get back to that Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Oh, I've got the sound oh, clip on that. No. Did you read through the notes? I got the sound clip on that. No, he literally it. talks, and I've got the sound clip. Okay. Oh. Anyway, so as. <laughs> As we wrap this up with Chuck Todd. <laughs> We're still on Chuck Todd. Chuck Todd decides to, um, because this happened after last week's show, um, Jeb Bush was in front of a giant crowd, one of the largest crowds he's ever had. He had a crowd? Of 20. Did he accidentally stumble upon a Trump rally? <laughs> <laughs> he was at the, uh, the behind uh, the Trump rally. No, he, this huge crowd that he had, he took advantage of the large number that was there to make his comment. The, I mean, the crowd totaled in numbers of upwards. I think some of the... You know, some of the people that they hire, they, they can scan a crowd and give you a general number of how many people were there. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think they're all in a consensus that there was at least 15 and at most 36. What? <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> it was a Did you need special technology to count all those people? Yeah. You know, this is interesting. Uh, this it was a such, and they don't talk about this in the clip. That's why I'm bringing it up. The crowd that Jeb was talking to was uh, like in my living room. Can I tell you, so, can, <laughs> can we take a brief time out for, uh, okay. for technology? Sure, sure, sure. Here's our technology roundup. Do you know that radars on aircraft, uh, military aircraft, they can identify an aircraft. Not just that there's one there, but identify what kind it is. Okay. Did you know how they do that? Uh, like the bat with they send it out and it comes back? Right, but how would the the radar figure out exactly what kind of plane that is? Because the size? Not the size. It's way more detailed. You say it's that. not the size that counts? It's not the size that, get, that matters. <laughs> that matters. That doesn't matter. It's not the size that matters. Okay, what matters? It bounces its little, its little signal off the face of... Of the first stage compressor. What? Yeah, and... No way! While running at full speed, it counts all the blades. No! And d depending on the number of blades in the first stage compressor, it can identify the plane. That is amazing. So the reason I brought that up is because you said they got these things that scan the crowd to get an estimate. If you can count the blades on a running jet engine... In flight? In flight. Full, I mean, you've got... There's got to be somebody that came up with the technology to scan a crowd and count the heads in it. No, they, they, they've got... crowd. You'd be able to get they it down to plus or minus two or three people. Probably, but they got crowd... Um, the, these crowd people... I mean, that's their job. They go one, no, two... No, no, no. They three. can look at a stadium and they can say, based on this stadium... Uh, Plus or minus a thousand. There's fifty-seven thousand people here. Yeah, but that's plus or minus twenty percent. But that, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. It gives you a general. I mean, that's there's a big difference between 150 people and 10,000 people. 
Right. So those guys can say, well, it was actually a little closer to 10,000, not so much as close. 